What's up guys, today's video is all about text in Blender. So let's open a new file and let's get straight into the video. Okay, so first of all, click on the default queue and we can just delete it. And then I'll just enable my shortcut VR, just so you guys can see exactly which buttons I'm pressing so that you can easily follow along. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to press Shift A and we're going to add a text object. Now, this is the default text object right here. What we want to do first of all is press R, X and rotate it in the X axis by 90 degrees. And after that, we can actually press Tab and go to the edit mode because the edit mode for text is a little bit different than normal edit mode. It's just a text box where you can press backspace and you can type in this text box. So for this, I'm just going to type example. Sorry, my caps lock is on. I'm just going to type example one, two, three to have some numbers in there as well. And then after we've done that, I can tab out of edit mode again. And this is what we have now. Now we can change the font on this. You can go into the folder here and that will open your list of fonts. So I like to use Google fonts. They have a lot of free fonts that you can download and use. So once you have something that you think that's going to look good in 3D space, you can just click on it and press download family and that whole zip folder will be downloaded to your device. And then you would like to basically extract all those files to a folder that you created to keep them. I have a folder here called fonts and what you're going to want to do is you're going to select all of them right click and install for all users and I already did this so it's asking me if I want to replace it I can just say yes because I know I can do this for all current items because I know the font's still going to be there but that's how you're going to install the font that you just downloaded and then we can hop back into Blender so once we're back in Blender we can actually just search for what we've downloaded I actually downloaded a different font because I think this looks a bit better and there it's applied now so what we want to do is we come to the data properties and we go to geometry and we just extrude this to the desired length or thickness actually and I think this looks quite good and then we just want to smooth it a little bit with the bevel function here I don't want to pull it too much because if you do you can see a lot of weird artifacts start forming and we don't want that so just about till there that's actually too much, it should be 0 0.004 and then once we've got this we're just going to duplicate this, press shift D in the X axis and we're going to move this aside. This is just so if we want to change the text or anything like that because this might be converted to a mesh for whatever reason we have this template and we can come edit it or change it later if we want to do that. We're going to hide it from the viewport and we're also going to hide it from the render and then with this example one to three text that we have here we can actually do a lot and in the next sections we're going to texture it and we're going to do some animations with it and I'll show you exactly how you, you can use it. For this one we are actually going to bring back the this duplicate that we hid away and we are going to duplicate it again and move it in the X and we're just going to hide it away again we are going to get a very front on angle like this and we're going to move up the timeline slightly and we can actually convert this to a mesh again and then just UV unwrap the faces okay and then to animate this we're actually just going to move this over to the side we're going to press I to keyframe it there and then at 50 frames just going to move it actually at 30 frames. We can press G and X. Just move it over to here. And then all the way over at 90 frames. I'm going to move this over to here. I and keyframe the location there. And at 120 frames, we will move this over far enough so that the shadow won't so show on the background anymore. So I'm there, I location, 
then what we'll have is this animation and then to do the background you can simply add a plane rotate it in the X by 90 and scale it up tab into edit mode UV unwrap the faces by smart UV projecting it and then I have installed this add-on called Blender Kit it's a free add-on it, uh, there's a lot of tutorials on how to install it and once you've installed it it would be up here and you can press this eye icon in the find materials tab and it will show you a bunch of materials that you can use I just used sci-fi and it gives you a bunch of options I might not find the specific one I used in the example render but we can still find something quite interesting I think this looks pretty nice let's see how it looks here in material preview and it looks like our UVs is a little bit large so if I zoom in here you can see the texture is there so let's go into the shading tab here and we can make this the UV editor and going into tab and into material preview you can just scale press all here and just scale it down considerably so that that texture becomes visible that can even be interesting if you make it completely small like that I think that looks perfect there and then for the text I'm actually just going to search for a metallic texture and I can press the little eye here and it will show me some options and I'm not going to go for something extremely elaborate I'm actually just going to go for something simple like that close this again and if I press space now we'll see that this is the result and if I put this in cycles there you can see how it looks and once you have the scrolling animation all you have to do is you can just loop this over and over or you can render different iterations of text and this will become an infinite scrolling loop which I think is quite cool so from here we can move on to the next animation So first things first, we're just going to convert this to a mesh. So I'm just going to right click, convert to mesh. And we just want to separate the letters. So I'm going to tab into edit mode, select all, and then P, and then by loose parts. And then you'll notice, if I tab out of edit mode, the letters do still have different objects in them. So I'm just going to select to make an active object, and then drag select, and then press Control J to join them so that later becomes one object again and I'll just do this for all of them next I'm just going to center the text a little bit because we are going to add a background and we're also going to center the camera so it will just work a little bit better if we center the text here because we're going to add a plane by pressing shift A and then just scale that up and scale it a bit in the X and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press two, tab into edit mode 2 for face select and I'm going to extrude this face or this edge in the Z axis right about there and slightly bevel, bevel this edge but just a little bit we can shade it smooth and then we can set up our camera angle camera is locked to view there and by pressing shift middle button we can actually get a nice camera angle going and once we have our camera set up we can actually start moving the letters around so we're going to go out of camera view and then we can just start moving these around and this is also obviously up to your interpretation to where you want them we also just want to make sure that the plane and the letters are on the same level so that they rest nicely on the ground so I can actually just move this up next let's, let's add a texture to our letters in camera view so I'm going to just say new with one active object with all of them selected and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to up this subsurface slider just so it gives it that nice and soft look and then I'm going to press Control L and link materials and then after that we can start working on the background and that's where all the animation is going to be so we're going to say new material you can also just smart UV project the background and what we can do is we can press shift A 
texture and we're going to add a wave texture and then we're also going to press shift a converter and we're going to add a color ramp and we're going to connect it to each other to the base color there and by default it's going to give us these bands that's basically black and white vertical bands but what we want to do is we're going to come in here and we want to say rings and then spherical and this is what it's going to give us and we can play with the scale here I like to make it nice and big and then the distortion you can also do a lot with that and then where the animation actually comes from is from the phase offset so this is where everything happens so we can leave it at zero we can keyframe it there over here we can actually open the timeline you can pull this over to the side and then add 50 frames you can just move this over slightly you can just keyframe it there again so watch what happens and that is what we want what we can also do is we can come into the color ramp here and we can play with the thickness of those lines and also how bold they are so we can get something like that and you can also use this to change the color so you can get that nice greenish blue color same with this one and then when I press spacebar now this is what we have we can also add a camera zoom just by selecting the camera and then putting a keyframe for the location in here and then at 50 frames you can just zoom in let's just lock the camera to view there is fine and we can just keyframe the location again so now this is what will happen and as you saw I just unlooped it in reverse and the last thing we need to do is we just need to limit the actual render so we're gonna code here to the output properties we're gonna come here and we're just gonna limit it to 50 frames and then in the texture for the background we're just going to add a clear coat the clear coat roughness a little bit and then put down this roughness a little bit and then up the metallic just slightly and then we can render this out and you'll have the result that I showed you at the start so for the last animation we're just gonna press shift A and we're gonna add a plane just scaled up that up slightly and apply the scale and then we can press ctrl 2 and that will add a subdivision surface modifier and we'll just add increase that to 4 come into tab tab into edit mode here and add some loop cuts to fix the shape a little bit we can tab out of edit mode and then we can apply the subdivision surface modifier after we've done that, we can actually just make a template of our duplicate here. So let's just copy this, Shift D, in the X. After we've done that, we can just unhide our template here, so we can make another duplicate. And then we can hide it again. And then we're going to convert this to a mesh. We'll tab into edit mode, select all, and we'll separate them again by loose parts. And then the same thing as previously, let's just hide this plane for now. Just going to connect all of these. Once they're connected, you can press G to grab in the Z axis, and we can move it to about there. And then we can just unhide this plane and we can work on it for now. We're gonna tab into edit mode, press one for vertice select, and we can just select any vertice over here, put on 
the smooth proportional editing. And we can move this in the G. We can just create a little bit of a hill here. And we can just edit this to look like a land basically. Like a piece of dirt. Something like that. And I believe that looks fine, so we can tab out of edit mode, we can shade this smooth. And now we're going to come into the physics properties. And then we're just going to enable a rigid body on this plane. We're going to make this passive. And then we can come into the letters here. You can take the P first of all, set the origin to the object's geometry. I'm going to control A, apply the rotation and the scale. And we're just going to add a rigid body to this object and we're going to make it dynamic, active, and we're going to increase this mass slightly to about there. And if I press baseball now, it should be do a, a bit of a fall and you can see it falls nicely onto that plane so we can just do this for all of the letters okay, once all the letters have physics remember that all of your object origins should be at their geometry and you should apply the scale and rotation to all of them if I press spacebar now this is what happens and it looks actually really good so now we're gonna move on to texturing this found this nice texture that looks like it has purple flowers it, obviously we're now in the material preview so that's Eevee so it does not look as great now but in cycles it would look pretty good and then for the text texture I'm actually just gonna search for a metal texture again here and they will pop up here and we can just use a nice smooth good looking metal texture I think this is gonna look quite nice and we can apply it to the E and once it's on there we can select all of them press Control L to link materials. So once we have our textures loaded we're actually just going to set up our camera angle and set up our lighting and get ready to render this. So I'm just going to come into the camera and just set it on a nice and low angle like this. I actually want to get it so that the text is not in the shot. I'm going to scale this plane up slightly using Shift Z and then what I did was I actually added an HDRI so that there's a nice and cloudy background just quickly look how this looks on the animation, oh and I still have keyframes on my camera so let me just delete those and we can come back to that angle have that visible in the initial shot. I think that looks perfect. Let's quickly press spacebar now and see what happens. And I think that looks really great. So I think we can cap this at 50 again. And let's see how that looks. And that is exactly what we want. So now we can render this out. And that is it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like and comment if you enjoyed.